There's gonna be peak oil! But there isn't. But there could be. We're going to go through the top five examples, examples that are not up for debate, where the left has gotten it verifiably false. People say, well, you yeah. say they're always wrong. And of course, we try to source everything and provide overlays. But in this case, we're going to go through some very, very specific examples. Um, but I, I want to lead with this. With the whole Russia witch hunt right now and the FBI and Mueller, President Trump wanting to investigate the FBI, more Americans right now, when you look at the polls, have less faith in our institutions than ever. But could that be a good, is that really that bad of a thing? I understand that we need some faith in our institutions. We need, yeah. some, we need to have some respect for the office. But is it a bad thing for Americans to say, you know what? Turns out that the FBI can be politicized. Turns out I don't necessarily know that I trust some of these organizations. I, I, I go back and science forth on that. Science can be politicized. <laughs> I, I go back Who and knew? forth on that. I would love to hear your opinions. Also, some other examples, if you think, of the right or the left getting it wrong historically. So recently, this is where the left got it wrong. They said that Trump uh, was not spied on by the Obama administration. They claim the FBI was not spying on Trump. Remember this, everyone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can go look for more stories. We have a lot of Never Friday. happened. Com. Never would happen. Uh, yeah. And now they say, well, there well, weren't so much spies, but there were spies. We just call them informants. So they're here <laughs> in their own words. What about this notion that there was a CI, a confidential informant, embedded in the campaign? Is that true? Well, as we've seen, uh, unfortunately, the, the uh, identity of, of this uh, informant is now out. You said in, there was in, no media. informant! And if, you know, this is a fairly <laughs> benign tool it. available to uh, the <laughs> FBI, given all the other uh, uh, capabilities that av available mm -hmm. to them. We could have screwed you worse. Is that what he did? <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm talking about. The left never gets called on it. We were just talking about this last week with Venezuela. Because they own like, all the people who were called on it. You look at what the yeah. informants uh, are not. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said there were, you said there were no spies. Well, yeah, there were spies naturally. But if really, no, 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 no. We don't just get to move on on that. Yeah, but it's okay. You're saying President Donald Trump is right. Well, yeah, he's right. But the thing is, well, no, 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 no. Stop. Stop the words stop that the are press. making sentences we'll that are coming out of your mouth. And this has happened for a long time. Let me run you through some examples. So let's go top five. Number five is peak oil. My favorite. Remember this? <laughs> this, I don't know on how many bumper stickers. Yeah. I don't know on how many signs are there. The term peak oil. Oil. So much so that now they don't use that term. People say, what do you mean by peak oil? So since the 1950s, right, the left has repeatedly claimed that we'll reach a point of maximum extraction mm -hmm. yeah. of oil resources. But this specifically applies to petroleum, but generally yeah. they kind of apply it to overall resources. That when it's reached, we're going to reach this terminal decline. Yeah, because they hate right? oil. As recently yeah. as 2010, by the way, Paul Krugman claimed that peak oil has arrived. Oops. Right? <laughs> You've never seen these That's kinds so of costs terrible. at the pump as you do in 2018. <laughs> So what's the truth? This is proven verifiably false. U.S. hit a record high in oil production alone in November last year. They had an even higher record in February. Term we, have, we, we have arguably more access today, today. to natural resource, to, to gasoline and natural gas than ever in recorded history. And we're yeah. finding new ways. Imagine if we'd have enacted the policy that the yeah. left claimed we needed. Mm. Right? We're not even getting into climate change, just the peak oil. Yeah. Not true. Okay, number four. I've talked about this, but I think it's pretty important. AIDS. All right? Listen, the left claimed that AIDS was going to turn... They claimed it already was an epidemic. Yeah. Yep. Everybody. Oprah said about AIDS, I think she said this in, the, in, the, uh, in 1990. Maybe she said it in 1989. She said, AIDS <laughs> has both sexes running scared. Research studies now predict that one in five. Listen to me. Hard to believe... Yes, Oprah. One in five heterosexuals will be dead or could be dead from AIDS at the end of the next three years. One in five. Believe me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Verifiably false. AIDS became the single most research-funded diseases, uh, research-funded disease ever in yeah. modern American history, despite being a statistical non-risk. Money that could have been better spent on, oh, cancer. <laughs> or the kid with diabetes that he didn't ask to be born with. Here, you don't want to catch AIDS in the United States? It's not a one in five stat. If you are not having gay anal sex in a truck stop with complete strangers or using hypodermic needles that you're sharing with other people, guess what? Your statistical chance of getting AIDS in North America is zero percent. More money than any disease in modern America. Thanks, <laughs> Oprah. Number three, this is a big one. The Star Wars missile defense system. Mm -hmm. This is something uh, that every Everyone, and you've probably heard this term to the point where you even think that it was Ronald Reagan's term. It's not. Sven Computer is going to educate on that, uh, that uh, us on that a little bit later. Everyone mocked President Reagan and said it would never work. Let's roll some clips. Many American politicians and scientists campaigned against what they saw as Reagan's expensive folly. The heavens are for wonder, not for war. Stop Star Wars. Stop weapons in space. 
Reagan's critics said that SDI was hugely expensive and would never work. They were appalled by the deep cuts in welfare programs that would be needed to pay for it. <laughs> That's, we'll talk about that with, uh, with uh, Mark Levin later. That's saying that, you know, you look at Winston Churchill, he was immediately ousted. Yeah. After his uh, the first thank general you. election. Bye -bye. Because like, thank you for helping protect us. Now we want free crap. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> well, I couldn't that. believe they'd be cutting welfare to protect themselves from the communist Russians. <laughs> and nuclear missiles. Talk Come about on. not understanding the role of government. Well, here's, here's the truth, right? They mocked the, they mocked the defense system, which Ronald Reagan had. They coined it Star Wars missile defense system. The ensuing arms race helped bankrupt the Soviet Union. And the system, by the way, it's used today and works perfectly in Israel. It's used in cities across the globe today. We know that it works, but they use this term Star Wars missile defense to make it sound like there was a stupid actor. By the way, at the same time, they, they were advocating nuclear disarmament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just so funny. you know, that's not only about the missile defense system. Yeah. They didn't think we should have nukes at all. Hmm. <laughs> do, you get, do you give us that one? Sven Computer, you were saying about the Star Wars missile defense. Yes. So you were trying to find who actually coined that term. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so Reagan never used the term Star Wars defense system. He, he coined it strategic defense initiative. Right. And then an author of BBB named Arthur C. Clarke, who wrote science fiction books, uh, apparently used the term in front of Congress, and then all the media latched onto that because they thought it was genius to just call it Star Wars. Never let a, a good story get in the way of the actual facts. They could probably actually help people, but it's more fun to make fun of somebody and say Star Wars than it right. is to protect against nuclear Well, the thing nuclear. is, it's, this is actually one of those deals where if you try to Google it, all the articles say, Ronald Reagan's Star Wars missile defense system. Yeah. They all actually attributed exactly. it to him because they wanted people to think that he was a dumb actor. A dumb actor who stared down the Soviet Union, by the way, and won. You were wrong about that. You were wrong about the missile defense initiative, and you were wrong about nuclear disarmament. Right? Right. Okay. Number two. This one's really important. We've talked about it. The Model Cities Program. Uh, parentheses, all subsequent government welfare programs but. designed thereafter. So this is one that is, again, very... Yeah. We don't, we don't want to sit here and debate socialism with you uh, on a philosophical level, whether no. you think it's a moral imperative to share. Okay, we are just going to look at some examples here. Empirical data. Some yeah. Can we admit that the war on poverty in the United States hasn't worked? Nope. It never can works. We, can, we, can we admit that? Yeah. It, fail, it hasn't worked statistically. The Model Cities program, right, if we look back at Lyndon Johnson, Detroit was one of the model cities. They took a city that was the wealthiest city in the country and said, now we're going to put in some welfare incentives. We're going <laughs> to piggyback off of the success of Detroit and claim credit for it. And there goes Detroit. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, that sucks. Blame the Republicans. The welfare state destroyed families. It incentivized single motherhood. Since launching the war on poverty, out of wedlock births have skyrocketed. Poverty has been nearly completely unaffected. I mean, it's one of the war on poverty, the model cities program. This is one they said this was going to solve the problem. And of course, if you look at it, not only did model cities not solve the problem, but then you look at other programs. Well, this is going to solve the problem. And then you end up putting band-aids on top of the tourniquet that you initially put on there when yeah. they're, 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 you couldn't you couldn't fix the wound. I get the spirit of it. Yeah. You don't want war. Well, neither do we. I get the spirit of it. You don't want poverty. Well, neither do we. Yeah. The difference is historically, you were wrong. Historically, you were, do you realize that Tom Hanks, did you ever see that on MSNBC where he talked about World War II? He said, we went into World War II. I don't remember the exact quote based on fear mongering and racism. Yeah, this is the guy who it, came well, up with Saving Private Ryan. It's like World what? War II? Isn't that one that you would just kind of, we all find, we talk about common ground? Yeah. World War II is a war you're going to argue over. I don't know how we get here. All right, which brings us to number one, because we talked about this last week, Venezuela. This is really Wonderful important country. because uh, it, it obviously points to socialism uh, at large, but the left consistently, and now they're trying to distance themselves. Yeah. Now we have to go, no, 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 come back in here. Here's Venezuela, here, here's Sean Tuts. This, this is your child. Yeah. This is your child. <laughs> it, it bears a striking resemblance, Bernie. <laughs> Son of a bitch! So the left praise Venezuela, and of course other South American socialist countries, ad nauseum, roll clips. So here you have an extremely rich country, enormous wealth, highly concentrated, most of the population living in you know, your misery. Uh, and finally, there's a government that's actually doing something for them. Uh, so, uh, they can like the most American, brilliant American but, thinker, uh, Noam Chomsky. Policies Trump. happen to be, uh, it's felt by the population that they've got the first government in the history of the country that's actually doing something for them. And everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world. That all the Cuban people were going to rise up in rebellion against Fidel Castro. They had forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the society. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. 
Mm. Uh, disagree. <laughs> but this is one of those things where, again, they, they just, pra- and they move on to the next thing. Well, they didn't do socialism yeah. properly. He was praising Castro. And by the way, yeah. that's not that. You can also find Michael Moore claiming that Cuba's health care system was better than the United States as recently as Sicko. <laughs> and I remember because the Canadian press. Because of a poll. Yeah. Because of a poll. The, ca- <laughs> yeah. the Canadian press praised it. So now, only now, are they trying to distance themselves? Ca- Here's something else that's really telling to me when you look at that. He says, he forgets that Castro gave them health care. Oh, ooh, what does that mean about Bernie? Okay, listen, Bernie bros, you love him, you think, oh, it's so- socialism would work in the United States. What does that tell you about Bernie? It tells you that Bernie believes Castro has the authority to grant you health care, ha- which means he has the authority to take away hmm. your rights, yep. to take away the rights from private companies. Look at what happened in Venezuela. You saw John Oliver praising the fact that Chavez took control over the banks and they decided to fire executives. They cheered for it. That should tell you if Bernie Sanders is ever elected to office, he believes that he can grant you rights like free health care, like free Internet, like free insert whatever it is you want here. And he also believes that he will have the authority to take those away. That is bone chillingly scary. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Everyone's starving in Venezuela, okay? (laughs) It looks like the Karate Kid bullies in their skeleton costumes. It is an absolute (laughs) horror show in Venezuela. Everybody now acknowledges that it sucks. And I I think that we can all agree that Cuba didn't do so well under Castro for a while. Did Bernie Sanders come out and apologize? No. For Cuba, let, let alone Venezuela, did Sean Penn come out and say, ooh, wow, you know what? I was wrong. Maybe he's not the most beautiful human being alive. Oh, Lord. They never get called on it. Joe Biden makes up stories about meeting people that he's never met in places that don't even exist. <laughs> right now, we're talking about this today. We're not spying on Trump. And they say, well, what about this spy? Well, yeah, we do have informants on Trump. He just said he didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Keep moving on. What were you, you were going to say something now, Kitcher? Uh, at some point, you just wonder if the left just loves lies. I mean, this, they, yeah. they love these lies, and they, they live by them, just like they, they like the lies that of, of artificially inflating prices of gasoline to compensate for peak, the lack of peak oil. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They just love the lies. We're going to run out, but we have a major supply glut. There's going to be peak oil! But there isn't. But there could be. <laughs> but there isn't. Could be. <laughs> there is not. But, but there is. <laughs> It's entirely possible. No, it's not, Bernie. Unless you get your policies implemented, you authoritarian asshole. Uh, by the way, this is not even to mention some of the more current topics. We want to hear from you what you think are prime examples. This doesn't even include Obamacare claiming that it would lower premiums, deductibles, while you could keep your doctors if you like your doctors. Dodd Frank, and of course, the fact that Donald Trump would never, ever, ever be president. Look at that. <laughs> Turn the tables on Al Gore and use the internet to our advantage. If you like this video, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button or the notification bell next to it because subscribing isn't enough. Watch one of these other videos and, uh, you know, listen, you can, you can stick around. You don't have to. But here's the thing. The fact that you're still listening to me saying stick around, as I say stick around and you're sticking around, ah, we just added another ad. You just made me for more sense.